Hello, welcome to the Gym RPG Show. It's June the 19th, 2020, and we've got an awesome show coming up today. We're going to be talking about Persona 4 The Golden on Steam uh, that was just released this week. And we're going to be talking about Cyberpunk 2077 that uh, they had some big news announced today. And EA also had an EA Games uh, game showcase. So they announced a few things as well. So uh, without further ado, let's get straight into it. So our first story is Persona 4 Golden and um, VG247 has announced that it's quickly become the most concurrently played non-MMO JRPG in Steam history. So they've said Persona 4 Golden has already smashed the record for the most concurrently played JRPG on Steam, excluding MMOs in the platform's history. The news originally appeared over on Resetera where a user shared current Persona 4 Golden analytics. Apparently Final Fantasy XV previously held the record for most concurrent players in a non-MMO JRPG on Steam, according to Steam charts, that was approximately 29,279 people. At the time of the Resetera post, Persona 4 Golden had 29,984 players and the count keeps going up. And I would say that Final Fantasy would probably be the biggest JRPG in terms of like um, JRPGs that were turn-based and more traditional type rather than the Monster Hunter or Demon Souls type of JRPG. Uh, so Persona 4, pers well, the Persona series, I would say would probably be the second biggest uh, franchise out there now. I would say it's probably bigger than Tales uh, from Namco. Uh, so this has been way long overdue from Sega, Sega and Atlas. Uh, they should have put this out much earlier, uh, but for some reason Atlas always seemed to be holding back from putting their games on PC. And finally, um, you know, when they finally been, f well, I wouldn't say forced, but like uh, insistently uh, pus pushed into putting their games out on PC, uh, they've been successful. And and you gotta you gotta uh, give some credit to Sega because uh, they've been managing this series uh, a lot better. And Sega recent times have been much better at managing their series. Um, you see this with the Yakuza series uh, where they have uh, announced games very early. Uh, we're talking about Yakuza 0 and Yakuza Kiwami. They announced both of those at the same time. And now with Persona, uh, they've made Persona dancing games as spin-offs. They've made a, another, I guess, a refresh uh, in Persona 5 Royal. Uh, that they should really be putting onto other systems, not just PS4. And now they finally they're uh, looking at putting games on PC, and you can see that Persona 4 Golden is very successful. Now the other part of this is that, um, which uh, doesn't look like it's in this article, is that Persona 3 Fez is also coming out on Steam, but uh, there's no date announced for that as yet. So. Just to recap, um, Persona 4 is a JRPG that came out in 2008 on the PlayStation 2. And they also had a Vita version called Persona 4 The Golden, which had quality of life changes. Um, uh, it's more like a director's cut almost. And there's m a little bit more gameplay and more story involved. And just overall, the better version of Persona 4. And now, um, so I think another part of the success, uh, aside from the fact that it's been long overdue, is that um, it's twenty dollars on Steam. Uh, so that that in itself uh, is, you know, it, um, credit to Sega uh, for putting out their older releases uh, for a lot cheaper than you know your standard full price sixty dollar game. Uh, so. If you haven't played Persona 4, um, personally, I'm not the biggest fan of Persona 4. I have it on Vita. Uh, but if you like JRPGs, um, uh, definitely um, go and check that out. Uh, it is a little bit old school, I would say. Uh, it's still got that sort of um, 
Well, because back in the PS2 days, Persona 4 was more like a spin-off uh, because Persona 4 was actually a spin-off of the Shin Megami Tensei series and then the Persona series became actually more successful than the uh, mainline games. Um, so Persona 4 was, I won't say a budget production, but you can see areas where it's more of a slim down game uh, because they use a lot of the same assets a lot of the time and they will have, uh, the, for example, the dungeons look very, very similar and you're running up these like 15, 20 floor dungeons that all look the same every floor. So, uh, but, you know, people really like these games because they can fuse their own personas, which are like these things that you can um, uh, uh, create uh, to help you fight uh, the enemies. And those personas are kind of like uh, reflect your personality, I guess. And those personas, you can fuse them and mix and match the personas to create the kind of um, uh, monster that you that you want to help fight for you. Uh, so I guess people who like min maxing their type of games would really like this type of JRPG. Um, for me personally, it was just a lot of grind, um, grinding up. Uh, like doing the same thing over and over again in the dungeons um, but this is something to check out and for $20 um, yeah it's definitely at that price point where you know if you haven't played it before you, you can always give it a try and it's not a big loss okay our next article is from uh, Eurogamer and they write Horizon Forbidden West launches 2021 on PlayStation 5 so Tom Phillips writes, It doesn't come as a huge surprise, but PlayStation has now confirmed Horizon Forbidden West will be a 2021 game for PlayStation 5. There's a deeper dive into the new lands featured in the sequel in this 3-minute developer video which mentions some of the new tribes and machines on offer. The map is larger than the original, Guerrilla Games says, and will have virtually no loading thanks to the PS5's SSD. Guerrilla announced the sequel to its hugely successful hero Horizon Zero Dawn last week during Sony's PlayStation 5 reveal event. Few other launch dates have been confirmed outside of Spider-Man follow-up Miles Morales, which arrives in time for Christmas. So when I uh, watched this uh, trailer from the PlayStation 5 reveal event, I thought it was the best looking game that they had, and I thought this was probably going to be quite some time away. If it wasn't going to be 2021, it could possibly tw be 2022. The game just looks so much better than everything else uh, in the sh game uh, PS5 reveal event. Uh, so I thought that that would just be, it would make sense that it would take a couple of years. But it seems like this will be out for 2021 which is really only about a year and maybe two or three months away. So it seems as though that uh, they are right in the middle of uh, the production and I would say probably six months to the end of production. So uh, this this thing looks like um, there w there's probably going to be more previews, more gameplay shown pretty soon. Uh, that's, that's really exciting. And you know what I noticed about the PS5 event was that a lot of things are coming a lot earlier than we would expect because with the PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4 the games came out a lot longer than uh, uh, a lot longer after launch uh, so the the PS4 would be uh, what was announced uh, sorry released that in 2014 and then uh, there wouldn't be very many games in the launch period or the first year or even the first year and a half after it was about two years later that we started to get uh, games uh, at a more consistent uh, pace but what we're seeing with um, PS5 is that we're getting Spider-Man uh, at release uh, or at near launch we're, we're probably getting Gran Turismo 7 uh, very close uh, within the first six months uh, of the PS5 I would say and so yeah it's quite surprising that a lot of games are coming out and you know PS4 or Sony they must have realized okay we need our exclusives to come out right at the start of the right at the start of the um, uh, the, the PS5 era right at the start of the generation 
And I think the reason they're doing it is this is because they saw uh, what happened with Nintendo. With Nintendo, they came out with Mario Kart, with Mario Odyssey, with Zelda. They came out with all of their big games right at the start. And they didn't worry so much um, towards the back end. They front and uh, loaded their um, all of their games for the Switch. Uh, and that's kind of what PlayStation is doing. Uh, that's what it feels like they're doing now anyway. So for a while now, um, Sony has been has stopped uh, developing for the PS4. And that's why they didn't have an E3 event this year. They, they weren't going to E3 this year. And even last year, they only showed four games. They showed Spider-Man, uh, Ghost of Tsushima, uh, uh, and the, uh, the Last of Us Part Two. Uh, so this this has been their strategy for a while. They've been very quiet about it. Um, but this is pretty exciting. So, you know, I think in the past I said that... Um, yeah, the first couple of years usually doesn't mean there's a whole lot of games for the um, system. But it seems like with the PS5, it it looking like the, P, the games are coming a little bit earlier now uh, than what we saw with the PS3 and PS4. So, you know, um, nothing is ever permanent. And um, it looks like the PS5, um, you know, if, if you're leaning into thinking about getting it at launch, yeah, well, there's another reason. Looks like the games are going to be coming out a little bit earlier. Okay, so we don't often, um, I guess, uh, go to sites where you buy games, um, but Humble Bundle has a Fight the Racial Justice Bundle, and it looks like a really good deal, so, uh, you know, why, why not promote this one? Um, so and and they've already raised two and a half, um, well, two million three hundred thousand dollars for charity already, and all of this is going to charity as well. So um, none of this will be going to devs, uh, as it says here, a hundred percent goes to charity. Uh, so this will be most likely be going to Black Lives Matters uh, charities. But um, essentially, these games uh, for thirty dollars, uh, you're getting a steal. Uh, it says here you're getting $1,243 worth of content and true, you know, you're not going to be paying uh, the recommended retail price for all of these games but for $30 um, you you are essentially getting Football Manager 2020 which is like about $30, $15 already NBA 2K20 would probably be cost you about $15 and this is on discount, right? Like if you were to buy these games on discount that would be $15 at the moment um, and that essentially means you're getting like another 40 games for free and there's a lot of good stuff here there's um, Baba is You, Hyper Light Drifter, The Jackbox, Party Pack 4, Spelunky, Kerbal Space Program, Titan Quest Anniversary Edition, uh, Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing, FTL, Advanced Edition, Bioshock Remastered, This War of Mine, Endless Space Collection, Amelo, Age of Wonders 3, Overlord 2, Surviving Mars, Kingdom Classic, Eastside Hockey Manager, Gonna Blueberry Edition, Overgrowth, Company of Heroes 2, The Ball, Super Force, Super Time Force Ultra, System Shock Enhanced Edition, System Shock 2, Broken Age, Newt 1, All You Can Eat, A New Beginning, Final Cut, No Time to Explain Remastered, Knights of Pen and Paper 2, Starcross, Vertiginous Golf, Earth Knight, Plunge, Pesta Quest, Real Politics, Elite Dangerous, My Memory of Us, Mirror Moon EP, In Between, Gunscape, Standard Edition, Neo Cab, Regular Human Basketball, Planet of the Eyes, Crown Takers, Framed Collection, Darkest Dungeon, that's the DLC, and there's a whole bunch of books on Black Lives Matters, there's 12 Years a Slave, uh, uh, this is a really interesting bundle, and there's a ton of games here. Uh, and this, the, you, it would take you the whole year to beat all of these games. So for thirty dollars, um, this is a really good deal and uh, a really good cause to uh, 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 um, donate your money towards. Okay. 
So this is a rumor from WCCF Tech. Uh, they, I guess, uh, don't really have a source beyond somebody that told them something. <laughs> uh, but they say that Xbox Series S Lockhart will be half the price of the Series X. July events will be a night of uh, mic drops rumor. The Xbox Series S Lockhart may be half the price of the Xbox Series X and it will be an important part of Microsoft's strategy for the soon to begin sorry, for the soon to begin new console generation. Speaking on the Beyond 3D forums, Eastman, who has proved in the past to have access to Microsoft's insider information, revealed that the Xbox Series S will be half the price of the Series X, come in a small form factor, and it will be an all-digital console. The insider doesn't know the final pricing for the Xbox Series X, and thus the Series... Okay, so I think that's incorrect. It should say Xbox Series S, and thus the Series X. But he had heard that Microsoft was repaired for a... $400 Xbox Series X. So, I don't know who this person is, but um, yeah, you know, probably, he's probably having, well, I won't say, he, it, it could be a guess. Uh, we don't know. Um, there's a lot of people who say they have insider information and they, while they have some vague idea, like part of it, is true usually it doesn't all end up being correct so i think um yes the so just to um, back up a little bit the lockout will be um, the i guess the um, the 1080p version of uh, the xbox series x so the xbox series x will be the 4k resolution version the lockout will be for all the people who don't want to really upgrade their 1080p tv but they find that the Xbox One S, uh, the old Xbox One, is a little bit too weak. Uh, because, well, at the moment it is at 1.3 teraflops. So they'd want to upgrade to something like a Lockhart, which is, uh, they're targeting around 4 teraflops, which would be a lot um, more powerful. And it would be able to keep up with the Series X games. So games designed for Series X uh, that use all t 12 teraflops, they would be uh, they would work quite fine on a Lockhart um, on four teraflops. Now a lot of people are saying that um, Lockhart uh, will hold back the Series X, which I don't agree with. Um, yes, to a certain extent, but the fact is that games are ever evolving anyway. So you don't just kind of get that generation and then just uh, you you don't get that generation leap. You you do for like um, certain first party games, say like a Sony, uh, and they have like you know the Horizon Zero Dawn two, where they have showcase games, which clearly are a generation leap, and and that's what Sony wants to go for. They want to go for you know, those specific um, exclusive games, they, they want to make them um, have that generation leap. Uh, but what we generally see is that um, the development of games happen over time and things get better over time because new techniques enable new techniques further down the line. And this is the strategy that Microsoft is going for. Microsoft is going for an evolving strategy. You see this with like, you know, Apple iPhones, you see this with um, uh, uh, PC. Uh, so it's not, it's not new. Um, so they, they wanna have, for all of the people that can't afford to get a Series X, whatever price that may be, and I'll address that in a, uh, uh, just a little bit later, uh, they want uh, games uh, that they want gamers to be able to still be able to participate so that's why we have a Lockhart and yes um, it may um, hurt the generational leap for those one or two games say for example if Microsoft were to develop a triple A Halo for example um, the Lockhart version may not be as good as Series X, but for like 95% of the other games, the Lockhart will be really great. And, you know, if they say that Series X is 400 and the Lockhart is 200, well, um, a lot of people may just opt for a Lockhart if they don't have a 4K TV. And, you know, that, that could be a 
a strategy that um, could backfire on um, Sony because they are not at that price point. They are at that price point for a PS4 or a PS4 Pro, but Microsoft have a next gen Series S console that is two three hundred, and that allows them to reach a new market that, you know, if they if somebody is in the market for a two hundred dollar console and they compare a PS4 or a Lockhart, you know, that says a lot about Lockhart. You can't play those PS5 games like um, Horizon Zero Dawn two on a PS4. But if you have a Lockhart, you will still be able to play like Halo or Gears of War, the, the next generation um, Halo Gears of War. So uh, that's why there's a Lockhart. And now they also say that they don't know if it's going to be like 400, but Microsoft are prepared for it um, to drop to 400 or to prepare to fight for a uh, next gen console race at $400. And well, that that's I would say that's probably almost speculation. Like uh, that that's probably just like um, some talk over coffee or something like that. And maybe it will be, but we already know that the build of materials for the PS Five will be about four hundred and fifty dollars, I think. And for the Xbox Series X, it will be around four hundred seventy. So both consoles are actually pretty close in price. And I think that, um, yeah, it's probably unlikely. I still think it's unlikely that they will want to sell it for a loss. So I don't think we're going to see 399 Xbox Series X and PS5. The only way we will really see that is if uh, PS5 decides that they're a little bit nervous about Microsoft and they are just going to go all out and um, try to um, kill Microsoft right from the beginning that's the only way we're really going to see a uh, $400 Xbox Series X because um, PS5 they'll have a digital version for 300 or uh, 350 and then they have a PS5 at 399 then Microsoft comes in and goes well no we're going to have a Xbox Series X at 399 as well so I don't <laughs> I probably don't see it I think I think um, Previously, my estimates were like five ninety nine, and now I'm kind of leaning back towards four ninety nine, maybe five forty nine. <coughs> I I think there's kind of no reason to have five forty nine. You either just go forty nine, four ninety nine, or you, you just both both consoles will probably start up at four five ninety nine. Um, the the digital version of the PS five may still be. 499 and then we may see a 549 or 599 ps5 that's that's what i think will most likely happen because um, sony marketing has done really well they'll be looking at all of their uh, marketing analytics um, and sony will see that they're getting like 10 times the number of views for example on youtube than microsoft so they may just see it as no point um, to release the uh, console at a loss um, but you know, uh, I was listening to uh, Moore's Law is Dead and they were championing a $300 PS5 digital version and they were saying because it locks everybody into the PSN store and that's pretty valid and you know, uh, I could see them wanting to push people into the digital version, um, that, that, that could be possible. But I, I think they are just going to price it reasonably and let the consumer decide which one they want to go for. So it will be very close, I think. I think um, the digital version will go for like maybe fifty to a hundred dollars at the most to the um, the non digital like disc based version. All right, let's get to some Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven news and Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. 2077 came out today with some news that they were going to delay the game from September 17 to November 19. Let's just read this out. Uh, those of you who are familiar with the way we make games know that we won't ship something which is not ready. Ready when it's done is not just a phrase we say because it sounds right. It's something we live by even when we know we'll t take the heat for it. At the same time, we are fully aware that making such a decision costs us your trust, and trading trust for additional time 
is one of the hardest decisions a game developer can make. And despite we think it's the right decision for the game, we'd still like to apologize for making you wait longer. Our intention is to make Cyberpunk 2077 something that will stay with you for years to come. In the end, we hope you understand why we did what we did. At the time we are writing these words, Cyberpunk 2077 is finished both content and gameplay wise. The quests, the cutscenes, the skills and items, all the adventures Night City has to offer is all there. But with such an abundance of content and com complex systems interweaving with each other, we need to properly go through everything, balance game mechanics and fix a lot of bugs. A huge world means a huge number of things to iron out and we will spend the additional time doing exactly that. This week, journalists from all over the world are starting to independently play the game. We are eager and quite stressed to hear their opinions, as well as see your reactions when they publish their previews right after we air Nice City Wire on the 25th of June. We hope this will satisfy some of your hunger for the game as we work to polish it for the November launch. So that's the tweet, and the game has been delayed about four, maybe five times now. So initially this game was supposed to come out September last year, then moved to April, and uh, April, yes, and then from April it moved to September 17th this year, now again to November 19th. And they're all the delays that I can think of, there might have been more. Uh, and it doesn't, um, well, this one surprises me. The other delays didn't surprise me. I thought September 17 was pretty much a lock, mostly because it would be too far into the fall season. Uh, ideally, you want to bring out the game around September, and you then you get the double whammy of, okay, you release the game, lots of people buy it in September, then you get another double whammy of the sales uh, during Black Friday, uh, when a lot of people pick up uh, presents for the holiday season. And uh, now, well, honestly, it's not going to make that much different in terms of sales for Cyberpunk 2077. It's in that category of GTA uh, 6 or GTA 5 and Elder Scrolls where they will just sell whatever they're going to sell. You know, if it's going to be 50 million or 100 units, it will, everybody knows about the game, everyone's going to buy the game, and uh, it doesn't really matter if they delay it, and it doesn't really matter how long it takes. Um, that's why GTA 6 can take as long as it wants, because it sells 100 million units. Cyberpunk 2077 is in that ballpark of selling as many units as it wants. I think um, The Witcher 3 sold around 30 million, Maybe it could have even been 50 million, I don't recall. And so when you're at that number of uh, units sold, it, it doesn't matter how long it takes anymore. Um, when you're at about 10 million units, which is still a ton of units, right? Like uh, we're talking uh, only the very best games get uh, sell 10 million unit, units. Uh, two, two or three years would be a good timeline for 10 million units, even if you took 5 or 6 years, 10, 10 million units uh, would still be prof profitable for you, so it, it doesn't matter anymore for them, and uh, the only thing I take away from this is they really shouldn't have announced when they were going to release the game until it was a lot closer to finishing, so they really should have, next time I think, you know, say The Witcher 4, I don't think they should actually announce a release date until, say, like they're about three months from the end of the game, uh, because it's. Uh, I I think um, having to delay it four or five times, uh, I it's it's not a good look for any anybody really, and they don't they didn't really need to announce the launch date so far out every single time, so when they delayed it from last September to April, they really didn't need to announce the April date. Um, so, and they also, Cyberpunk uh, 27 or CD Projekt Red, they also had a conference call about uh, this issue, uh, and they had a lot more news about Cyberpunk 2077. So I'm just gonna read what um, Tova Risk uh, has uh, outlined uh, he actually listened to, or 
they actually listened to the uh, uh, the conference call. So they confirm that press is playing the game as we speak in order to produce previews for the next week, 25th. Previews will be released when Night City Wire ends on 25th. Read the previews. Was said so video. Read the previews. Was said so video unlikely from press. Read the previews. Okay, so there's no video. It looks like there's no. It, there may not be uh, gameplay videos, but. Um, the press will play the game and then write about it in text form. Uh, press playing the game for previews are from around the globe. Press has access to a build that has character creation. Start from, starts from the beginning of the game and has time limit, but no limits on what they can do in the game. Build is lacking things like some of the story content. A CDPR wants to keep stuff under wraps. Build has bugs in. Commentary, so no spit polish, vertical slice to play. That is good. Yeah, so this is not just a vertical slice where uh, there are, uh, there are, it's free of bugs. Because um, sometimes uh, developers will do that to make the game look better and then the game comes out and then there's a ton of bugs in the final version and then people say, hey, this is not the game I played. This is uh, straight from the, uh, the game itself with bugs and everything. Uh, they are streaming game from PC suppressed to play because of COVID presents in-person events. Uh, that's really interesting. They're gonna be um, streaming the game to people. So they don't, the press don't actually have the game on their computer. So it will probably be some sort of like Google Stadia type of um, setup. They are worried about releasing so close to next gen, confirming that backwards compatibility compatibility is possible on PS5 and Xbox Series X for the game. Game will run on PS4, PS5, Xbox One and Xbox X from day one. Game will look better on next gen consoles from day one. Next gen version is planned for 2021. More robust update will be free of charge for those who own last gen version. They, they expect next gen consoles to re release around the same time but they aren't worried about release titles. Creating competition for Cyberpunk 2077, as release titles look to be different kind of games. So, um, this is really interesting. Like, the PS5 and Xbox Series X are about to be launched, probably in November. This game is coming out in November, but it's marketed as a PS4 game. You know, what I really, really, really think they should do is they should just press the game with and then put the same disc with PS5. People who go to retail just say it's PS5. Then two years later, you come out with a remastered version. I think it doesn't make any sense for people to put in to buy the PS4 box copy, put it into PS5. People who are at the stores they want to see the PS5 logo on it. I don't think it's going to make that much of a big difference. Um, I, I think, you know, for people who buy games from uh, department stores still, it doesn't make any sense. Like, uh, people will ignore the PS4 games. They will just look at the PS5 boxes and they will just pick from the PS5 boxes. So it makes sense for Cyberpunk 2077 to have Cyberpunk 27 PS5 box. That's, that's what I think anyway. Okay, uh, they expect next gen consoles to release around the same time, but they aren't... Okay, so I read that one. They keep being coy about number of expansions coming to Cyberpunk 2077. Number of them will be announced soon as part of, part of marketing campaign. So I think it will have like maybe three or four initially, just like uh, The Witcher 3 had two expansions. I feel like uh, these type of really, really big games uh, like uh, The Witcher, Cyberpunk and uh, GTA, um, they benefit a little bit more from just uh, finishing production and then moving straight on to the next game because they are going to take a really long time to make. They take five, six, seven years. And if you spend time to make more expansions, uh, 
there's kind of diminishing returns as you uh, make more expansions. Well, I think um, it, it's a balance, right? Like um, there's things to be said about making the next Cyberpunk 2077 game. You know, if this game sells 50 million, maybe the next game will sell 100 million units. You know, they're trying to make that balance of uh, where, how many expansions to make and then uh, when they should make the new game, the next game. Because the next game for them has been so lucrative, right? <clears throat> okay, so. Um, insisting that COVID and working from home situation aren't cause of delay, last stretch of development is just very demanding. They have seen increases in pre-orders of Cyberpunk 2077 every time some store that has it runs sale on other games. No plans to live events for the game at this time. CDPR doesn't do delays to try and reach arbitrary Metacritic scores. They just want to release game when they feel quality is what they strive for. I don't know about that. I mean, Metacritic is super important. And, uh, you know, it would hurt them if they got like an 80. So, you know, I don't think they're trying to reach for 100, for example. Uh, but, uh, you know, Metacritic is important. Multiplayer portion version of the game is delayed proportionally to delay of Cyberpunk 2077. Okay, so that's about that's a lot of Cyberpunk 2077 information. There's probably not going to be gameplay videos uh, coming out of this from the next game uh, from the next week or so. But people are going to be playing it and they will write some uh, previews. And I think you'll probably see some. Um, older gameplay videos um, tied together with some newer preview information. So um, EA had their EA Play Live event, their game showcase today, So because uh, a lot of uh, publishers are having their sort of like E3 sort of time at the moment and announcing stuff. So EA Games also had their announcements uh, today and they announced that Apex Legends uh, finally gets Switch release and crossplay this autumn. Now they left out Steam. I don't know why Euro Eurogamer left out Steam, but Apex Legends is also coming out on Steam this year. And as you know, Apex Legends is a shoot 'em up, uh, multiplayer shoot 'em up, uh, and it's it's been pretty successful for um, EA. At one stage, people were thinking that it was going to be the PUBG killer. And while it wasn't, it's still uh, successful uh, getting out uh, pretty early into that sort of battle royale space, um, which is one reason why it's been very successful. Uh, and so, you know, this is a free to play uh, game, uh, battle royale game, and it's coming out on Switch and Steam. So, yeah, every you know, free to play games are always um, great to get on s systems. Uh, we don't want too many of them, but um, it's it's nice to have some right um, on every system. EA Games also announced a, a new game called Star Wars Squadrons. So everybody should go and check out the trailer because it looks fantastic. Uh, the graphics just look really next gen. The explosions look amazing. And uh, let me read some of this article from Kotaku for you. So today at EA Play, the publisher revealed the first look at gameplay from the upcoming Star Wars Squadrons. And to EA's credit, you know the trailer that they showed is five minutes, and there's a lot of gameplay in it. Uh, Squadrons is being developed by EA Motive. The same studio that worked on the single player campaign featured in 2017 Star Wars Battlefront 2. The game is set during the aftermath of the second Death Star's destruction and the fall of the Empire post Return of the Jedi. It will focus on two squads of air uh, of starship pilots, one a group of New Republic pilots and the other aligned with the remnants of the Empire. Players will create a new pilot for each side and will bounce between the factions between each mission. The entire game can be played in VR on PS4 and PC. This new game will feature both a single player campaign and 5 vs 5 multiplayer battles. When EA officially revealed the game last week, they made sure to mention that it won't contain loot boxes or or any pay to win elements. And props to EA for doing that. Uh, that's that's uh, really amazing. Uh, 
because you know ea they, they make so much money from their ultimate team and it's so um it's it's nice to know that for a single player game there isn't any um loot boxes or pay to win uh, even for the multiplayer you know you it's always awful when there's a single player campaign and then people move on to the multiplayer and then the full the whole thing is just loot boxes and that's not what this game is about for sure you know i don't expect ea to get rid of their ultimate team when it makes them three billion dollars a year um on fifa um although i would like them to reduce that somewhat um so to make it more fun for everyone uh, and rather than people opening you know hundreds and hundreds of dollars of packs uh there, there's got to be a, a sort of way <laughs> where they can still make money um but uh you're not just endlessly opening opening packs uh which is essentially like gambling right <laughs> uh, so star wars squadrons will be released on october 2 2nd october 2nd of this year for ps4 xbox one and pc it will also be released on steam origin and the epics game store at launch now again um this will probably work on ps5 and xbox series x so i don't understand why all of these companies don't just um put out that it also runs on uh, ps5 and xbox series x i don't understand why they don't just put the disc in a ps5 box because that's all people just want <laughs> um uh really like um how hard could it really be <laughs> right um and so this game if you like um tie fighter and star wars uh, x-wing uh in the past you know there are a lot of older gamers who love those games this game looks phenomenal i think everybody should um go check it out uh so yeah that's star wars uh, squadrons now ea also brought out a ton of um uh, I guess their games that were locked onto their launcher. So things like uh, FIFA. FIFA is now coming to Steam. And also Madden is coming to Steam. And The Sims 4 is out on Steam as well. So there are a ton of games that uh, EA has finally come out with on Steam. So uh, if you're after EA Sports uh, games, uh, you can now get them on Steam. So let's have a bit of a look and see what else that they brought out they've got battlefield 5 uh the sims 4 titanfall 2 dead space need for speed uh, mass effect dragon age so um, you can go out on steam and check them out some of those are on sale right now as well and i think uh, this is uh, pretty smart of ea because there's no point in ignoring an audience for too long uh because you've probably got all of the people onto your launcher um, as, and you're now missing out on people that would have bought your game if they're on Steam. And EA has 312,935 followers on Steam, so there's no reason why they should just ignore you know, um, a ton of sales on Steam. Even if they sell like 10,000 or 20,000 copies, uh, people may suddenly go, well, um, I, I actually like this game and I want to give EA all my money. I don't know who would say that, but then maybe they would move on to the launcher because if you bought the game on Steam, you'd pay uh, Steam 30%, right? But if you bought it on the EA launcher, uh, you, would, uh, you, you would give your 100% of the money to EA. So you can create fans that way. Oh, um, so before we get into hardware news, um, they also announced um, Dragon Age 4, was, although there wasn't much shown. Um, there was a tiny little teaser for that. And they also announced Skate 4. Skate 4 will be coming uh, to, I believe, PS5. And Burnout, the new Burnout from Criterion, is also coming out on PS5. Again, that wasn't much of any, uh, much. It was just a, t a bit of a teaser, although the cars did look very good. <laughs> very photo realistic um yeah there wasn't much info on those games but they just made small amounts announcements on that and that's probably about it for ea games showcase today 
Right, so let's get into some hardware for this week. And this was from a little while ago. This was probably from last week. Um, but last week we spent the whole uh, show on the PS5 reveal. Uh, and I was actually, when I saw this, I wasn't too sure how um, legitimate this was going to be. Uh, this was a brand new design. And a few other places have reported on this, uh, like Gamers Nexus. Uh, so, and they said they w weren't sure whether this was a legit or a design sample. So, uh, but they did report on it. Um, so yeah, well, we're gonna just have a bit of a look ourselves. Now, the reason why I say um, it, uh, I wasn't sure about it is it's a whole new design, and. Uh, let me just read a little bit of this. The card features, so this is the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3080 that they think uh, might be the uh, official NVIDIA GeForce uh, version. And it has a new design and I'll read from now. Um, the card features a two fan design with a large heatsink which might be hidden under a shroud in a later state. We can see the RTX 3080 backplate on one of the prototypes. The blue color of the upper sample is not the color of the card. This is just a wrap of the silver metallic shroud around the card. The design is very unique. Both fans are placed on opposite sides of the card, pushing the air in different directions. So one is a push, one is a pull, basically. The RTX 3080 design features an irregular shaped PCB. You can see this by looking at the rear of the card. The V-shaped design has allowed NVIDIA to place the fan closer to the GPU. Some of the readers might remember a similar NVIDIA design for the GeForce GTX 295 reference model. It also had a cut in this PCB under the fan. We can't see any power connectors in a typical place, which could mean that the connectors have been moved to the side, so similar to Quadro models. So if you can't see it on those sides, it would probably be on the back of the um, uh, of the card, so on this side, uh, where are we? Nvidia GeForce RTX 3080 features an Ampere-based GPU. Okay, so anyway, let's have a look at this card, and I think the clearest picture is if I show you this um, mock-up design of what it's supposed to look like, um, because it's hard to tell like what is the front and what is the back. This looks like uh, it's placed. Uh, right side up, so and this is the back of it. Um, and so what we see here is there's one fan here blowing down onto the GPU, uh, and then the air will get pulled this way. Uh, there's an exhaust fan out here, and you know in the past uh, Nvidia have done uh, blower designs. So this is the GTX 1080 Ti with a blower design. So it would blow the air in here and then the, the air would just get pushed out. And now essentially what they're doing is they have the same blower and then now they got an exhaust fan on the other side. So to help the exhaust uh, on this side, which means I think one, this was very loud, the blower, so people could hear it um, and they didn't like the blower too much. They, in fact, they preferred third party type of fans where uh, you had two um, fans blowing onto the uh, the fins to keep it cool and so because it was very loud now they're deciding to use a bigger fan and have an exhaust so you can lower the fan speed to make it a bit quieter now in terms of thermals um, I have no idea if this is successful or not I don't even know if this is the official thing uh, well, we don't know if this is the official thing. This could just be a mock-up or design sample. I, I believe it will probably be, um, be leg pretty legit because it's that it's got all of the wrapping on it as well now. Uh, that you would get, you wouldn't really put wrapping on a design sample. I don't know. Um, I'm just guessing here. Um, but if I was the manufacturer, oh, just getting the design sample, you just get the design and you wouldn't wrap it all up. Um, but who knows, right? Um, but in terms of design of this, um, I think this is actually, if you buy this, this will be kind of tricky. Um, sorry, when I say tricky, I mean uh, then your aftermarket water coolers 
will also need to take an interesting shape as well, right? Because you've got two fans uh, uh, operating like this. So if you wanted to go back to the older style of two fans and, and a bunch of fins on it, then you're going to have this funny um, V-shaped cutout that maybe you have to kind of try and, um, I guess, fill, fill a hole or fill a gap in here. But anyways, um, I'm not 100% sure I, I, I really like this design that much. But who knows, if it tests really well, then it could, it'll, it'll be fine, right? Um, but the reason why I'm not too sure is because it's got one blower or one fan on it. Uh, and, you know, in the past, we had adequate cooling with two or three fans. Um, and this one looks like it's got the one fan. Yes, it's got an exhaust fan, but we had a whole stack of fins here that, and we had two fans blowing down on, uh, on the GPU. And, oops. Um, you know, if, if I was to cool something down, I'd rather have two blowers bl blowing down on the GPU rather than one fan blowing on it and one fan pulling the air. Uh, but that's, that's just my take on it. Um, we have no idea how this works, uh, if it works well or not. Uh, but this is something to look out for. This could very well be the RTX 3080 that we're getting. This might not be the 3080 that we're getting for all of the third-party vendors that do their own PCBs, but uh, this could be NVIDIA's version. And in fact, it might not even be NVIDIA's version. This might be a third-party uh, version. Uh, NVIDIA may still come back with like their own type of design. So we don't know. We're still like about three months away from knowing uh, they're going to have their, uh, well, the rumors are that uh, they may release their uh, RTX 3080, uh, sorry, RTX 30 series cards around about August, September. So uh, we're still a few months from finding out what they're going to look like. Okay. Uh, this is really, really interesting. And uh, we don't often uh, talk about laptop, uh, laptop uh, hardware, uh, but AMD have a Navi 2012 based Radeon Pro 5600M with 40 compute units and 8 gigabyte HBM2 VRAM and it will be in the Apple MacBook Pro 16 inch for a $700 upcharge. Now this is a marriage of convenience uh, because HBM2 is really expensive and that's why it's not in any of the consumer graphics cards like you see with um, the NVIDIA RTX series or the uh, even the AMD Radeon series. So for them to put the HBM2 on, this might have been the only place that they could have put it on because they can do a $700 upcharge um, because a lot of the times with the, with the MacBooks, you, you go and uh, do a customized MacBook, you end up having to pay like twice as much for the RAM, for example. So you can upcharge a little bit more on the MacBooks because people really like the MacBook uh, industrial design of the MacBook, uh, the physical uh, look of the MacBook, and they will pay more uh, to put whatever it is that they want inside. If they want an SSD, they will pay double to put the SSD because they want a MacBook. Uh, so, um, but the fact is this Radeon Pro 5600M is extremely impressive for a laptop uh, GPU and I'll explain why. So uh, prospective Apple MacBook Pro 16 inch buyers now have a more powerful GPU option to choose from. AMD has introduced the Navi 12 based Radeon Pro 5600M with 8 gigabytes of HBM2 video memory that should offer quite a significant performance uplift from the Navi 14 based Radeon Pro 5500M which is part of the standard MacBook Pro configuration. The AMD Radeon Pro 5600M looks to be a super binned AP Apple exclusive GPU for now. It is being fabbed on the TSMC 7 nanometer process in a multi-chip module design with a GPU die in the center flanked by a 16-bit 4GB HBM2 VRAM chip on either side. According to AMD, the Radeon Pro 5600M has a boost clock of 1035MHz and can features 40 compute units 
2560 stream processors, uh, 2048 bit 8 gigabyte HBM2 VRAM with 394 gigabyte second bandwidth and can deliver up to 5.3 teraflops of floating point 32 performance. Now, this is basically half the speed of the RX 5700 XT. Now, you'll say, hey, only half the speed. Um, but that is in itself is pretty amazing for a laptop. Usually it's about like one third. Laptop uh, hardware is about one third uh, of the pace of, I guess, or performance of the desktop performance. So, well, I mean, if you want to compare it to the RTX 2080 Ti, which is the strongest one, 13.4 teraflops, then you're kind of pretty close, right? Um, so, but 5.3 teraflops of floating point 32 performance, that really puts it into the Xbox One X type of category. That, not quite, but close. Uh, and that puts it in almost into the GTX 1070. It's probably like a GTX, uh, GTX 9, better than a GTX 970, probably a GTX 1060 around abouts type of performance in in a uh, laptop as well so you're going to be able to play basically everything 1080 60p it's going to be like a lockout um, and this is going to last you most of next gen if you are on 1080p uh, and now of course we know you know the macbooks they have uh, much higher resolutions uh, screens uh, but that's okay you can play um, at half the resolution and uh, it will look pretty good. Now they say that all this power is offered in a 50 watt total graphics power envelope same as that of the Radeon Pro 5500M and the Radeon Pro 5300M. So 50 watts uh, that's really impressive for 5.3 teraflops of performance. Uh, I don't think I, I'd have to check but I don't think your 1060 is at 50 watts. So I th your, your 1060 is probably at like maybe 150 watts maybe. So having the same power at, at 50 watts, yeah, that, that's, that's amazing. Uh, that's, that's pretty exciting. And we should be seeing these um, hopefully within the next six to 12 months. And that really puts laptops in an all new category. Uh, so all of these laptops are now being able to keep up with uh, next-gen consoles like the Xbox Series X if you play it like 1080p. Now, Intel also have some of their own news, uh, although this is more of a leak than news, but Intel Tiger Lake, uh, Ryan Shrout, uh, Chief Performance Strategist at Intel, uh, talked about uh, well he, he said he was giving Tiger Lake um, a bit of a, a workout on a laptop and uh, he says that with Tiger Lake he's able to get 1080p at 30 frames per second now Tiger Lake is not what we just talked about in, with Navi Navi is their um, I guess their bigger solution and uh, that's so Tiger Lake. Uh, you compare that more with uh, AMD Ray Renoir or AMD Zazan, which is the uh, GPU integrated graphics um, solution. So integrated graphics is also really important for uh, laptops because then you're also able to get the integrated graphics onto the uh, together with the CPU to create an APU, uh, an all processor, if you will, uh, and and that allows you to remove the GPU entirely, which is also really exciting news. You get rid of the GPU, and then you're able to uh, run an APU, which does both a CPU and an APU. And a lot of the times, the, these APUs don't require uh, that much uh, in terms of wattage. So they're even more uh, efficient type of uh, graphic solution. And now what he's saying is with the integrated performance, uh, he's able to get 1080p at 30 frames per second. So 
what we're talking about here is uh, basically integrated performance at 1080p 30 frames a second for a next well a current gen game a ps4 game and that wasn't really possible before this has been something that uh, we've been i've been wanting for the longest time to have integrated graphics on the apu chip uh, that's able to do 1080p and we're so close so we're doing 30 now 30 frames per second now uh, hopefully we can you know, get to 60 fps so this might be say like two teraflop we need to get to four teraflops uh, and then that is really when we'll have a renaissance in terms of uh, price and performance because right now you're able to get say like an Athlon uh, AMD Athlon uh, chip for like fifty dollars which has Vega 3 graphics you're able to get a 3100 or 3300 G I believe or 3200 and 3400 G chip and they're like about a hundred dollars and if you just buy that chip you don't have to buy the GPU right uh, you don't have to spend another two hundred dollars on the GPU and if you can just perform at 1080 60 for a lot of the games uh, that opens the door to a ton of games which uh, which makes sense to like buy just an APU uh, you, you wouldn't need to buy a CPU and then you wouldn't need to buy the GPU you just buy that and then there'd be a ton of games available for that right now your 3300G is very close to playing a lot of games but not all the games and the chip that I had previously which was the Ryzen 2200G uh, from about two years ago that uh, you could play things at 720p fine uh, but you couldn't play them at 900 or 1080p uh, it would be a little bit too slow to to play those games at 1080p and the thing is a lot of our monitors are 1080p and if you play at a non-native resolution it doesn't look as good unless you play at like half the actual resolution say like if you play at 540p then uh, it look a little bit better <clears throat> uh, 540 then say like if you didn't play at if, if you played at uh, 720p for example right <clears throat> so this is really exciting uh, I think uh, it's really not long to go now before we get 1080 60 on APUs and then we really see um, cost effective PCs say maybe around the 200 to 300 dollar mark you could make a computer for around 250 300 dollars uh, that plays games and that's gonna um, take the fight to low cost consoles that's gonna be really exciting so that's all the gaming news that we have for you this week I hope you enjoyed the show now if you uh, like the show please uh, subscribe to us and uh, click on the like button uh, be sure to keep up to date with all of our videos that come out on site on this uh, channel uh, we have a Nintendo uh, video coming up this week uh, so I'll be looking at the problems of the Nintendo Switch uh, and try and examine like what type of issues that we want to fix on the Nintendo Switch so hopefully we can fix that for the Switch 2 uh, so uh, be sure to keep a lookout for that uh, and I will um, see you for, uh, in the next video. Thanks for watching.